of you met us at 7 a.m. in Claremore. Heather, you were there. I went to the rally there. It was so wonderful to see nine different churches coming together with the city of Claremore, uh, moving out into the city, taking care of widows and neighbors that are unable to care for their home, for the property around the city. This is Jim. He is the city manager of Claremore. He uh, was encouraging the crowd there, and he said, as you go out today, you're giving people hope. And then he got choked up, and he said, you gave me hope today. And this is the beauty of the body of Christ, people coming together to show the love. Truly amazing what happened in Claremore. Let's hop over now to Mohawk Park. A lot of you served with us yesterday at Mohawk Park and it was amazing. A Mohawk Park is truly a disaster area. Floodwaters coming up four or five feet in some areas. Heather, you're, Heather you're in the picture. There oh, you are. There I am. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on the chain gang here. We were fixing, Jordan was with me. We were fixing all of these cables that lined the park that had gotten uh, pulled down because of flood water. So we were on that chain gang together, but we also went and cleaned up trash in Bird Creek. And this is decades old trash. It was from the 1960s plastic that never goes away. 
when the floodwaters hit, a landfill was flooded. All of that debris came up to the surface and rushed down the river. We had some people, I, I say, would they went above and beyond or below and beyond. Uh, yeah, uh, here's Russ in this stagnant lagoon is what they call it, and it was um, a disaster. He's in here. We won't tell his wife, Lauren. He went in there, took off of his, his boot, and he went in waiters. there. He had waiters. He had waiders on. He, he had waiters, but he had he has a medical boot on for his foot, and he took his boot off to get in there and clean out all of that algae and debris. They made that park like new. In the picture, it's all green. When we left, you saw no green. Truly amazing. Let's yeah, give it up. Let's really quickly, Heather, let's show them the Tulsa Dream Center. We sent hundreds of people to the Dream Center. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, this is um, kids going to a birthday party. We Dream Center threw a birthday party for all kids that have birthdays in June and July that probably won't get to celebrate a birthday at home with their friends. A lot of them have incarcerated parents. So this was an opportunity to celebrate uh, big time. So we had a lot of fun there. This is a lawn crew. This is the before picture as they're getting ready to head out. They're all nice and shiny and clean. They were really messy and dirty later. <laughs> Absolutely, we did tremendous work at the Dream Center. Last, let's talk, oh, this was kick, or ending the day at the Dream Center. Let's talk a little bit about Case Community Park. We told you about several weeks ago in Sand Springs. This park was devastated by the flooding and we said, we wanna help you rebuild. So we were able to uh, work on two different playgrounds that'll be reopened, a BMX track, uh, that will be reopened. They're having an event this weekend. So it, that park has been closed to the community. It is now reopened and uh, people can um, get in there, enjoy time with their family and friends. We cannot thank you enough. You poured your blood, your sweat, your tears into our projects yesterday. I wanna recap and give you a couple of numbers. We had people at 79 projects across our community. Over 3,000 church on the move are spread all across Geary country. Together, together yesterday alone, we served 14,606 hours in our community. You guys, this does not include the hours and hours and hours and hours that you have poured out in preparation for yesterday. Really, truly amazing. It, we, and the work is not done yet. This was a leaping off point. There's more work to be done at the Tulsa Dream Center. There's more work to be done at Mohawk Park. There's more work to be done in Broken Arrow. There's more work to be done at Sand Springs. The city of Tulsa needs us yes. and we are ready and willing to answer that call some of you used skills that you use in your everyday life and you just didn't know that you could use it for the glory of god would you do me a favor and grab your phone so many of you yesterday as we traveled from site to site said i want to help more than just today i want to bring my heavy equipment and keep helping i want to keep picking up trash or i want to keep helping but maybe a different job would you text us if you'll open a text to 23101 and type in the word serve, we would love to connect with you over the course of the next week and give you a practical next step because like Heather said, we've just begun. Guys, let's pray as we um, head into the rest of the service. Heavenly Father, what an honor that you have invited us into your work. You gifted us, you've equipped us, each one of us individually, uniquely, with gifts and talents. We offer them to you, your body, to be your body, to move into the city. We offer ourselves as a living sacrifice that as you take hold of our hearts, moving into us to be your hands and your feet, we see your transformation power in our city. We see the kingdom of God coming down and bringing restoration to relationships. Your kingdom come, your will be done in our families, bringing healing, bringing hope, bringing health. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done in our neighborhoods and our communities, bringing life and love, overcoming darkness, overcoming evil with good, that your light might be seen because where the goodness of God is, it brings men to repentance. And I thank you, Lord, that because of our efforts, because of our giving, because of our serving, we see the kingdom of God coming to earth. We see many come to know you as your Lord and Savior, and we give you all the glory and praise today. Thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to worship together, that we have this opportunity to come before you, and we give you our hearts, our minds, our ears today, ready to listen, to receive, and to move. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen.
that seal the promise your very body began to breathe and out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me oh Jesus Christ you're the victory oh, oh, hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope oh, hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope oh Jesus Christ you're my living hope Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord come on let's sing hallelujah praise the Lord Today we want to make that hope evident, even in our finances. Let's have hope when we give today. Will you do that? If you want to give, bring your tithes and offerings. There's a couple really simple ways that you can do that. We're going to put them on the screen right now. You can go to cotm, cotm.info. Super easy way and safe way to give there. You can also text in your tithe or your gift today to 23101. Just type in the word give or L-Y-N for love your neighbor and the amount that you'd like to give. And we know that God is on our side. That God wants to partner with us in every part of our lives. So today, let's have hope for our finances as we pray. Father, thank you that you love us. That if you did not spare your only son, Jesus, why would you spare anything else that we would need in our lives? God, we thank you. We're honored. We're blown away by how much you care for us. We love you. Take these gifts, these offerings, these tithes. Use them for your kingdom in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen.
Well, good morning, Church on the Move. Great to see everybody. Let me welcome everybody who's joining us online. In fact, church family, let's put our hands together and say hello to everybody from all over the place joining us this weekend. Glad you're here. And I'm excited. This is a great weekend, obviously. We're celebrating Love Day and all that God did on Love Day. I just want to echo what Heather and Jamie said. Incredible. I love you, Church on the Move. You are amazing. As I toured around yesterday and I went to a lot of different places, saw you putting your blood, sweat, and tears, pouring it into our city. Can I tell you, our city officials at the different places, so from Claremore to the city of Tulsa to uh, Sand Springs to Broken Arrow, were all blown away. We heard it over and over and over again. They doubted you, but they will not doubt you again because you showed up big time. And I'm just so proud. In fact, I, I just walked around yesterday with a sense of pride in our church family and you and your commitment to serve, to love, to pour yourself into the community. I wanna just share with you real quick a note that was posted on Facebook. This comes from a lady who works directly for our mayor at the city of Tulsa, Mayor G.T. Bynum. And she posted this yesterday. We've been working with her, her name is Anna. And uh, she posted this to her Facebook page. I just wanted to share this with you because I thought this was so cool. She said, absolutely overwhelmed by the hands and heart effort from Church on the Move members across the community today. These pictures are from Mohawk Park where hundreds of volunteers came out and braved heat and ticks. Yes, there were ticks. I found several on me yesterday. Lord willing, what happened to me last year will not happen again. But uh, heat and ticks and mud to help clean up the mess left from the floods. I have no idea how many tons of debris were piled up around the park thanks to their effort today, but it was astonishing. From the little kids dragging muddy branches one by one to adults driving heavy equipment, cleaning up the mounds of tree debris, they worked throughout the morning filling multiple dumpsters a group of intrepid teenagers scoured the woods and found 61 trash cans that had been washed away from the soccer complex and were thought lost, although they weren't quite brave enough to bring back the two washed away porta johns they found. <laughs> the work that got accomplished today from these volunteers is more than something that would have taken us months to do. Quite honestly, some of it would never have been able to do, we would never have been able to do with the city staff and resources. These were some of the thousands of volunteers spread out across the community as part of the church's most aptly named Love Day, an opportunity for them to show love to their community by helping out. No matter what your religious beliefs, hard to argue with the fact that they were all doing God's work today. Well done, Church on the Move. I love you, I'm proud of you, thank you, thank you. People saw Jesus yesterday and the way that we loved our city, and I'm just so proud. Well, this has been a heck of a week for us. It's been a heck of a week for me personally, it's been a heck of a week for our team. In fact, I've asked them to stay up here with me right now. It's been some high highs this week, some great news I'm gonna share with you here in a minute, but there's been some low lows this week as we lost part of our family this week. I'm gonna ask Andy, Jordan, Di, just a few of you to come up here with me for a minute. Just, just come stand with me. This is Andrew. Andrew was more than a sound guy for us. He poured his life out here for the last 14 years. He showed up in 2005 with this guy together. They came almost at the same time. I was moving out of my role in youth ministry to lead this team of artists and production people, and Andrew was the guy that Marcos, right back here, said, hey, I, I know a guy who 
we were looking for a guy to run our sound and production. He said, I, I, I graduated with a guy from ORU. I think he's living in Eden. Marcos, I don't know that I ever told you, but I thought, that is the stupidest idea that will never work. There's not just some dude you graduated with who's in Enid that's going to work out. Oh, my Lord, was I wrong. I'll never forget Andrew came in the door. Me and my dad were sitting in there, and this big guy comes walking in. I thought, holy cow, this is like nobody we've ever encountered before. He changed our church. You may not know that, but he did. And he changed not only our church, but churches across the world. This week, when we posted about his passing on Tuesday, hundreds, hundreds of comments started rolling in from church leaders and production leaders all over the world and churches saying, our church is different today because of Andrew. He single-handedly and with our team raised the standard of excellence in the way churches do all of this all over the world. If you've ever been to a Church on the Move service and had chills go down your spine as the worship is coming out from the stage, then you were impacted by the ministry of Andrew Stone. But he was more than just somebody who made things look good and sound good. Guys, there are hundreds of people. The stories are amazing of people saying, man, he would text me in the night. He was there for me when I needed him. He was a brother to me. That's who he was to us. And he passed away on Tuesday. And we're, we're, uh, we're brokenhearted. Our team up here is serving, but this is not an easy weekend for them as they are processing grief and serving at the same time. But here's what I want to remind us of. In 1 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul says that we do not grieve as those who have no hope. Because one day our God, our Savior, our Jesus will return and with the voice of the archangel, he will call all of us together with him. And we'll be joined together with Andrew one more time, but not just for one more time, forever. We'll be with each other. That is the hope that we have. So let's together give our God praise. Let's honor our team. Let's honor the legacy of this great leader and man who God sent to our church for 14 years. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for sending such a beautiful team of people. Thank you for the ministry of Andrew Stone that he was to me. He was my friend. Lord, I miss him. This week, Friday night, I took my dad to his very first concert. 67 years, he had never been to a concert. That's so sad, I did not know that. I took him to 1964 Beatles tribute band, yeah. He loved it. But man, the whole time I was there, I was thinking, I wanna text Andrew because that's what I did at concerts. I would text him and we would talk about what I was seeing. And I just kept thinking, I miss him. I miss him. But just like we sang, he's healed, he's whole, he's forgiven, and he's in the presence of Jesus. We love you guys. Production crew, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Have a seat. Okay. Man. Now on to the good news. Ah, uh, wow. As that was happening this week, we were preparing for something else, something I'm so excited to tell you about. Um, a few months ago, I told you that we, you know, I felt like God was leading us, leading me to take our church in kind of a new direction. We, if you don't know, we're, we're one church that meets in, in, in three locations. Four is 180, but we kind of count that as part of this location, and so... Uh, three locations we have as a church, and for the first several years of having those locations, having those churches, uh, the sermon was always a video of me. So what you're seeing here is what they would watch there. We would record that on Saturday night, and I would do my best not to mention that it was nighttime, 
and uh, talk about today, never tonight, and, 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 and then we would play that the next day, and, and, and it worked. You know, it, it was fine. It was part of what we did, but I felt like there was something more. I felt like that just wasn't the model. Other churches do that, and they do it well, and it's great, but for us, I, I just felt like, man, I think there's something different. I didn't know how it would work, honestly. I, I didn't know what would it look like to have live teaching in each of our locations, and if we put a live, you know, not only teaching pastor, but a, a pastor who would lead in those locations and, and really pastor that church, you know, what would, it, what would it look like and could it work? Would there be unity? Would the church drift apart? How would we do it? And as we walked through really about a year ago, started thinking about this and dreaming about it, uh, it just started to kind of come together for how we could do it, but then we had to ask who. Who would step in and, and lead these churches? Who could be, uh, you know, these, what we call senior campus pastors? And a few months ago, I told you that my brother Gabe had moved back from California and uh, was going to be our South senior campus pastor, and he has, and it's been incredible. I mean, our South campus is thriving, growing. There's new life. There's new energy out there. Uh, we really feel like there's just such a great future for that campus, and if you've had opportunity to go out there and be a part of it, you know what I'm talking about. There's just a, an energy and an excitement out there since Gabe has stepped in that I love. But our Broken Arrow campus, which meets right there in the heart of the Rose District at the Broken Arrow Performing Arts Center, uh, that's our other campus, and we said, hey, we need a senior campus pastor for this. We had a sort of dream team candidate in mind all along. We had somebody that we said, you know, if we could get this guy, if he would be willing to come, if we could get him to come back from California, then maybe we might be able to kind of put a dream team together. And I am so excited. Some of y'all are clapping because you know that I'm about to tell you Ethan Vance has moved back from California. He's stepping into Broken Arrow. In fact, he's preaching there right now. Yeah, gotcha. So I'm so thrilled about this, and I, I, I wanted to be there this weekend. I was going to show up and, and, and introduce Ethan, but I felt like with Andrew's passing and just love day, I needed to be here this weekend. And so uh, I asked Ethan just to make a video, just to say welcome and hello and share a little of what's on his heart. So here's a video of Ethan just saying hello to you guys. Check it out. Hey, Church on the Move, Ethan here. And I am so thrilled to be able to say that we are heading home. God has done some amazing things to bring this about, and we are beyond thrilled to be rejoining the team at Church on the Move. I wish I could be there with you personally this morning, but I'm actually preaching at Broken Arrow right now while you're watching this. And uh, so I just wanted to take a second, record this while we're kind of wrapping up all of our loose ends here and share a couple of thoughts with you. And the first is just kind of an update about what God's been doing here in California. During this season, we have seen God do some amazing things. The church has seen families restored. We've seen marriages mended. People have met the real Jesus like never before. And in fact, uh, the church has more than doubled in size during this season, which kind of leads me to the question, why? Why, if God is doing so much here, would we be rejoining Church on the Move? And really, the answer starts from the time we left Church on the Move, because even when we were first stepping out on this journey, we stayed very close to the heart of what God is doing there. Sometimes weekly, we would talk to Witt and Heather and the team and just share stories about what was happening here and all that God was doing at Church on the Move. And during this year, we've started talking more often. And what was obvious was God was starting to bring to life in us a new vision and a new picture of what church could look like at Church on the Move in a, this new model, kind of this senior campus pastor model, like what Gabe has been doing at the South Campus, what I'll be doing at the Broken Arrow Campus. These teams leading these churches together under one unified vision inside of what God is doing in wit and Heather as our lead pastors. And as we've gotten closer to this, our hearts have begun to be more and more on fire for this idea. And it's been obvious to everybody, not just to us, but to the team at Church on the Move, to the team here in California, that it's time. 
it's time for us to take this step and help build this new model. In fact, uh, in February, we were sitting in a little restaurant in Breckenridge, Colorado. Gabe and Witt and I and some other friends took our sons on a father-son ski trip. And while we were sitting at this restaurant with the snow coming down, we were just talking about church and life and sharing what God had put on our hearts. And during that meal, I remember sitting there with my heart on fire, knowing that this was our next step. We didn't know when it would happen or how it would happen, but when we got done with that meal, we kind of looked at each other and thought, could this be possible? Is God really bringing us back? And the answer has been a resounding yes. It's been obvious to the team here. They are wonderful. They are behind us 100% in this transition. In fact, we announced this this last weekend to our church here, and it was met with a huge round of applause because they love you. They love Church on the Move, and they know that this is right. So they are sending us. The team here is great. The church is in good hands. Their next season is bright, and God is in it. And through this friendship of these two churches coming together, we believe that God is doing something special, not just in us, not just in the church as a whole, but in you as well, in your family. I believe that God has something special and significant for you in this next season as well. More joy, more love, more hope, more of the real Jesus than ever before in your life and in the lives of the people you love. But here's what it's going to mean. So this is kind of my challenge to you. Lean in. As we close out summer and start back into the school year, lean in because I believe God wants to do something in you that's special. But it's going to take all of us partnering together. So jump in, whether you've been at Church on the Move for 30 years or today is your first time. You're in a special place at a special time and God is up to something cool. I could not be more excited. I can't wait to see you. I'll actually be preaching at the Central Campus on August 3rd and 4th. So if I don't see you before then, I will hug your neck on August 3rd and 4th. And for all of you that I don't know yet, we are so glad to be joining this mission and this journey with you. We love you and we'll see you soon. Pretty cool. So, so thrilled about that and really so thrilled about this, this season that's coming up. In fact, today what I want to do is just share with you a little bit about where we're going to go, kind of outline a little of the fall uh, for you, and then I just have one thought for you today that I'm going to get you out of here. But I I'm so excited for where God is taking us, where he's been leading us as a church. I really feel like the last two years, and by the way, this weekend is the two-year anniversary of the weekend that my dad transitioned the church over to Heather and I. Two years we've been in the lead pastor role. Pretty crazy. And I feel like that these two years have been years of preparation for us. Not just for Heather and I, but I really feel like God has been cultivating the soil of Church on the Move, the soil of our hearts. There's been a lot of healing that's happened in the last couple of years, a lot of preparation that's been happening, a lot of growth, inward growth that's been happening in the last couple of years that I really feel like is preparing us for our next steps. And what we've been doing with Gabe and Ethan are a part of that, but I, I really feel like there's something significant coming this fall. I feel like God's given me a word. I'll tell you a little bit more about that for where we're going this fall. But next weekend, we're starting a series just to kind of prepare ourselves for this, to move into this season as we're winding summer down. The series is called Hope Rising. And what we want to do is just kind of take four weeks to just charge ourselves up, to remind ourselves of where we put our hope. You know, there's all kinds of places and things and opportunities and, 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 and identities that you can pour your hope into, relationships that you can pour your hope into. Many of us are living life with dashed hopes because we've put our hope in things where it can be robbed, where it can be stolen from. And so we're carrying around burdens, we're carrying around a sense of hopelessness. Proverbs says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Many of us, we're a little bit heart sick in life because our hope is misplaced. For the next four weeks, what I want to do across all of our churches is we're just going to talk about where we put our hope where our hope really goes. And I wanna just charge us up hope-wise, faith-wise for what's to come because this is leading us into this fall season. I want us to come into the fall season with a, a greater sense of expectation 
for what God can do through us, for what God wants to do through us, not just through the professional minister staff, but through you, through Church on the Move. Love Day was a a great example of that, that God wants to use us in more significant ways than we ever thought possible. And so for four weeks, that's what we're doing. We're just going to raise our hope levels for four weeks, and then that's going to lead us into, on August 17th and 18th, our Vision Weekend. And this will start a four-week series that we're just calling Missio Day. And what does Missio Day mean? It means the mission of God. We're going to be talking about this starting August 17th and 18th. This is Vision Weekend. And here's what I would say to those of you watching online, to everybody who's listening to this after the fact because you weren't able to be here this weekend, you're listening to the podcast, if you consider Church on the Move to be your home church, If this is your place, if this is your home, I want you here at one of our churches this weekend. I want you to, whatever you have to do, if you've got something planned, I'm going to challenge you to rearrange your plans. Be here that weekend. I'm not trying to drive attendance up. I believe that there is a a word that God has given me. He's been downloading into my heart, into our pastor's hearts, and we're going to be sharing that word that weekend and some vision about where our church is going. And so I'm just calling everybody together. That's a you do not miss it weekend. I want you here that weekend as we share kind of this, this, this burning word that God has put in my heart that I'm so excited to share with you about where Church on the Move is going. And I, I can hardly wait because there is an army of people here as I look around and what I saw yesterday, over 3,000 people There is an army of people that God wants to mobilize for his kingdom and for this city. We're not just trying to grow a bigger church. We're trying to put a big dent in the kingdom of darkness in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We want to make it hard for people to go to hell here. And so we want a church that's active, that's alive, that's breathing, that goes outside the walls of this building that we think of as a church, but is not a church. This is just a building that houses the church once a week. And so we want this active, living, breathing church, and I I can't wait to share with you. So do not miss that weekend, August 17th and 18th. We'll be talking to you about it over the next four weeks, just to kind of get you ready, but it's going to be an incredible fall. And there's a a prayer time that goes into all that. We'll we'll, we'll give you all the details. I I can't wait for where God is taking us. Okay, this weekend, I've got got one thought I want to share with you. And I I felt like it was so appropriate to what happened this weekend with Love Day as we went out, as we were in our city serving and and loving people. To kind of walk you up to this thought, though, I want to walk us through what we believe is our spiritual pathway. And if you're new here, maybe this is your first time. Um, What we believe is that God takes all of us on a journey. And although our past and our stories are all different, you know, everybody's got a unique story, your upbringing, your background, it's all different. And we all, all are unique individuals. But God walks us through a spiritual journey, a spiritual pathway that is the same. We see this trend, this path that happens in all of our lives. I want to walk you through it and then draw one thought and then I'll get you out of here. Here's the first one. We believe that the first part of the journey is that you know God. And that's really a deep, intimate knowing of God. Not just a belief in Jesus. I grew up with a belief in Jesus, but I didn't really know God intimately. When that happened, something started to change in my life. Inwardly, some things started to change. It led me to this second phase which is this idea, that you grow in freedom. Now, I want to just park here for a second because I want to talk about this. Growing in freedom is a significant part of our journey. This is where we deal with our past. See, in Hebrews chapter 12, it says this. It says that we should lay aside every weight and sin that so easily entangles us. Let me say that again. Every weight and sin. Some of the things that you deal with are sins. It's just, it's just bad habits. You know they're sinful habits. They're things you, you got to stop doing this. And this is something that you're trying to overcome. That's a sin pattern in your life. But he doesn't just talk about sin. He talks about weights. And some of us are carrying weights around that keep us from being 
the kind of people that God wants us to be. It keeps us from accomplishing the mission of God. This could be old family patterns, the, the culture that you grew up in in your house, uh, your family of origin. This could be things that were done to you, abuses that you carried for a long time in your life. It could be patterns of unforgiveness or bitterness, spiritual brokenness, and you're not able to effectively minister to other people. You can't even really effectively love other people because you're chained to your past. But here's the problem. Sometimes you're gonna hear people say things like, you don't have to deal with your past because it's all covered under the blood of Jesus. That you don't have to go back. You don't need to think about the things that happened to you. You just need to let that stuff go. It's covered under the blood of Jesus. You can forget about it. Jesus said it is finished and he meant it. And so you don't need to think about any of that stuff. You just need to march forward in your new life with Christ. And it confuses people, and here's why, because it's partly true. It's true. Jesus said, it is finished. There's nothing more that Jesus needs to do to accomplish anything for you in your life. We're not waiting on God. So when we come to Christ, yes, our sins are forgiven. And as far as Christ is concerned, your past is dealt with. But as far as you are concerned, it may not be. See, while Jesus can wash away your sins in a moment, you can't easily forget about that abuse that happened to you all those years ago. And some of us were walking around forgiven by Christ, but we have not allowed him to heal us from the inside out. And so what we talk about when we talk about growing in freedom is it's not about living in your past. It's not about dwelling on the brokenness of who you are. It's about facing the most painful places in your life and taking those things and offering them to Jesus and say, okay, here's my hurt. Here's my wound. Here's my scars. Heal me. And he does. That's what it means to grow in freedom. And the reason that God does that is he's preparing you for ministry. He's preparing you to serve and to love others. He's preparing you for this next step, which is to discover purpose. And this is where you start to look at your whole life and you see your gifts and your talents and your story and everything that you've been through and you start to integrate all that together so that you could use it all for God's glory and God's purpose and God's kingdom. So you stop living this sort of Christian life over here when you're at church, and then there's your work life over here, but you start to see the two come together. You start to see how your whole life is ministry. You start to see how the business that you run and operate is ministry. You start to see how your role at school is a, a, a part of your ministry. It's not separate pieces or compartments in your life, but it all flows together. And all of that, though, is leading up to the final thought, which is this, that you go and make a difference. And this is really what God is trying to do. And I want you to hear this, because this is really just a foretaste of where we're going. God's mission for you. You want to know what it is? He's trying to get you where your life is about making a difference, making disciples, expanding the kingdom. That's the whole idea. The reason that he takes you through this know and grow and discover is so that you're fit for ministry use. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. All of these other three are meant to lead you down to this go here so that your life is making a difference. That's what I love about Andrew because he lived a life of impact. His life made a difference. And that's what God wants for every single one of us, a life that makes a difference. Now, here's what I wanted to tell you today, just a quick thought but it's so powerful. You need to know that these two are connected. Grow and go are connected. Here, and they're connected both ways. L let me explain this, right? Your go is connected to your grow, meaning the, the difference that you make here will be defined by or determined by the level of freedom that you have here. Some of us, our, our, our ministry life isn't really producing much fruit because there's some real significant areas of, of bondage. We're imprisoned to some things that we've never let go of. That's why this grow in freedom piece is so significant. It's not enough just to say, I believe in Jesus and confess him as Lord, and then Jesus starts using you fruitfully for ministry. There's a, 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 a stripping away process. There's a, a healing process. There's a growth process. It's called sanctification. 
And as God sanctifies you, and often that sanctification process is painful, but as he sanctifies you, he's not just doing it for your own sake. He's doing it because he's preparing you for ministry. He's preparing you to love and to serve others. That's what that's about. So those two are connected. But here's the other part, and this is really the thought that I wanted to leave with you today, is that your grow is connected to your go. So I'm saying that in reverse. Your, your go is connected to your grow, meaning that to the level, to the degree that you grow in freedom is the degree that you're going to make a difference. But also, to the degree that you're willing to go is also the degree that you will grow. Now let me just share this thought with you. Some of us are not growing spiritually. We're not growing in freedom because we're not going. We're stationary. Our spiritual lives are stagnant because we're remaining in our comfort zones. We're not stepping out in faith. We're not following God into uncharted territory. We're not nervous a little bit about what's to come next. We have things sort of arranged in the way that we like them. We're stuck in the same place that we were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and we're not growing spiritually. Can I tell you that growth comes when you go. God calls us out, and it's in the going that you grow. This is something that I found so much to be true in my own life, that as I stepped out in faith and God said, okay, here's an opportunity, here's a ministry door that's open to you, somebody challenges and says, hey, I think you ought to lead this. And even though I did not feel prepared at the time, God used that open door, God used that go opportunity to grow me spiritually. Let me show you how this works just from scripture. Hebrews chapter 11, verse eight says this. By faith, Abraham, when called to go, there's that word, go. When called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though, and this blows me away, church, but look at this, even though he did not know where he was going. Can I just stop and tell you that this is the pattern of following God? This wasn't just Abraham. This is what it is to follow God. God says, go. You say, where? God says, I'll show you. Just start walking. None of us sees the end at the beginning. None of us has any idea where this is all leading. Can I tell you, my dad, as much as some of you guys revere him and you were taught by him and you grew up under him, can I tell you, he didn't see all of this. He had no idea. I remember years ago, we were working on a vision weekend piece. Angie, you'll remember this. We were working on a vision weekend piece. We were getting ready to launch a campaign to, I think, remodel all of this, this whole room. So this would have been around 07, 08, somewhere in there. And we were working, I was in charge of our you know, video crew and all that at the time, and we wanted to tell the story of the church. How did Church on the Move? Dad, tell us about the great vision. Tell us about the dream that you had to start Church on the Move. And I sat with him. The video was right here on this stage. And I sat with he and my mom. And I said, tell me about what you had in mind when you started Church on the Move. And their answer was pathetic. <laughs> they didn't say, I saw thousands of people. They didn't see, I saw a church where the sun never set on it. It's global. It's this huge thing. They said, God just said, start a church, so we did. <laughs> they didn't know all of this was going to happen. They didn't foresee Love Day 32 years later. They didn't foresee that their son would step in and lead the church after their tenure was over. They, they didn't see any of that. They had no idea. They took a step. God said, go, and they went. Can I tell you, they are not the same people they were 32 years ago. Their spiritual maturity, their growth inwardly is totally different than it would have been had they stayed where they were. Friends, if you want to grow spiritually, you're going to have to go. 
You can't stay where you are. You can't sit in your Christian bubble. You can't stay in your comfort zone. God never called you to sit. He called you to go. That's why in Matthew 28, he said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. That's the commission that we have. And it doesn't just apply to people who receive a paycheck from the church. It goes for all of us. Can I tell you, one day, each of you will stand before God and you will stand before Christ and he'll say, what did you do with that commission that I gave you. And I can promise you on that day, you're not going to want to say, well, I attended church every week. You will realize in that moment how pathetic that actually sounds. He said, go, 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 meaning it's active. It's an active faith, not a passive faith. Go. Hebrews 11.9, look at this. It says this, By faith, there's that word again. He's having to take a step out because he doesn't know where he's going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land. This is amazing. Like a stranger in a foreign country. See, that's what it is to live by faith. There are times where you feel like you don't belong. There are times where you feel like an imposter. There are times where you feel like an outsider. There's times where you feel like a performer. I remember the first times I stood up here and spoke, I thought, I am the last guy that needs to be on this stage. They they see right through me. They know I don't have what it takes. I had all of those feelings, but that's what it is to step in and follow God. And this has been the story of my life, is God has opened doors for me. Challenges, can I tell you, They were things I did not feel ready for. But I said, okay, God, I'll go. And as I went, growth happened. I'll never forget the first time. I remember this happening in my life. I was 19 years old. We just started 180. For those of you who maybe hadn't been around here for a while, 180 was a revolution, not just for our church, but really for the church world. After we started, it didn't take but a couple of years before we had more than 2,000 teenagers showing up at the Interchange Business Park every single week. I can't tell you how often I run into people who say, hey, I'm coming back to church. I used to go to 180 all these years ago. It It happens all the time. I was 19 when that happened. My dad felt like the youth ministry needed a change, and he tapped me on the shoulder, and I helped him, and we worked behind the scenes. That was my preference. I'm an introvert. I like being behind the scenes. And so I was helping him out and doing all that. They started putting this new band together at that time. I didn't think anything of it. I had been playing guitar a little bit. I started whenever I was 17, but I was by no means proficient with the guitar. I wasn't, you know, Jimi Hendrix or anything like that. I could strum a few chords. I'll never forget Ken Blunt, who was our worship pastor at the time and who was helping put this youth band together. He came to me and he said, Wit. I want you to be a part of the youth band. Now, let me just pause right here and say, everybody else that was a part of this band, it wasn't like the kids part of the youth group that were coming together and playing, and so we were all equally as terrible as each other. Everybody else was a professional musician. I mean, these were pros. These were excellent players. And he said, Whit, I I would like for you to play. I'm like, are you sure about that? I I don't even know how to read chords. That's all right. We'll teach you. I I didn't know what to do. He just said, we need somebody who's from this generation to represent, to kind of lead from the stage. All you need to do is just stand up there and play your guitar. I felt completely unqualified, but I said, okay. I remember stepping up there, playing the first time. I got these chords. I'm just trying to stay with it, just trying to kind of play with everybody else. But after a few weeks, I start feeling pretty good. I I start kind of feeling proud of myself. I'm like, I got this. In fact, I remember one time in the middle of a song, I just said, I'm just going to go into a little guitar solo right here. (laughs) Later on, did I find out that they didn't mind at all because they didn't have me in the mix at all. (laughs) I was just completely silent the whole time. I was just eye candy for everybody, I guess. What's amazing about that, though, is that was the beginning of something, because it wasn't but a couple of years later that our worship pastor at the time stepped down, and by that time, I had improved a lot. I had been working with the band a long time, 
And uh, they said, who's going to lead the worship team? I had no idea who was going to do it. They sat down with me. I'll never forget Blaine Bartell sitting down with me and saying, what, I think it should be you. I thought, I can't sing. That's okay. You look cool. You're young. Be up there and lead this thing. I'm like, oh, okay. I did. And it was amazing. I learned so much about music and so much about putting music together. Guys, all the Christmases that we did, if you ever came to a Church on the Move Christmas production, all the work that we did, all the worship that happens around here, all of that happened. See, I led that whole team for about 10 years. All of that was put into me and was built in me in those years at 180. I was learning. God was growing me. I was having to step up spiritually, do things that I had never done before. And then in 2005, actually 2000, excuse me, 2004 it would have been, our youth ministry was going through another transition. Our youth pastor, Eric Lawson, was leaving to move to St. Louis to plant a church, which has gone on to be super successful. He's done so well. But I remember sitting right back up that way my dad's office was. And I remember sitting in there, and Blaine's in there with my dad. Blaine had helped get 180 started with my dad. And they're talking about, okay, what are we going to do? Who's going to step up and lead the youth ministry? I had no clue who it was going to be. I'll never forget Blaine saying, I, I have a guy in mind. I think I know who needs to step up and lead it. I think it should be Wit. I about fell out of my chair. I never preached a sermon in my life. I barely even knew the Bible. I'm hardly qualified for this. What are you talking about? I don't know what I'm doing. But Blaine said, I think you're the guy, Wit. I think you need to step in. I remember stepping up there to speak for the first time, having no clue what this was like, but I was stepping into ministry. Can I tell you the spiritual growth that had to happen to me? Here's why. Because when you step out of your comfort zone, you find out how dependent you really are on God. You find out how weak you really are. And it's in that weakness that God comes in and he starts to strengthen you from the inside out if you let him. But you have to be willing to get in a spot where you're risking something, where it's not comfortable for you. I started preaching little by little at 180 and more and more and more. And then eventually my dad said, I want you to preach here on this stage. I had no idea how to preach to adults. I didn't know what to say, but I got up here once a year for the first several years. It was just once a year. Some of y'all are like, thank you, Jesus, once a year. <laughs> That's all right. Once a year, come on up here and preach. Went, and I did. I would come up here and preach. He was, but I was, something was being built in me, built in me, built in me. Then somewhere around 2015, my dad and I started talking about transitioning the church what was going to happen. And can I tell you, two years ago, this weekend, when my dad stood right here and said, it's time for Wit to lead the church, and everybody was applauding. It was, a, it was a crazy weekend for me. But can I tell you, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. You're never ready. Can I tell you this? You are never ready to do what God has called you to do. Not fully. You're never really ready. It's never a thing where you go, this is what I'm called to do, and then you step into it, and it's just super easy. If you're doing that, I don't think you're really following God. Because look at Abraham. He was a stranger in a foreign country. Look at Hebrews 11, verse 6. Look what this says. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means that without some risk, without stepping into the unknown, without saying, God, I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know how to lead a small group. I don't know how to lead an outreach. I don't know how to pray with my family. I don't know how to pray over my wife. I don't know how to step up and share a thought in front of our group. I have no idea how to do that. Until you're willing to take those risks, you're not really living by faith. And I fear that some of us are living a faith-less faith. And I believe, Church on the Move, God is calling us to go. God is calling us to go. And this fall, that's my hope. What we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to raise a challenge to Church on the Move. We're going to throw some challenges out there and say, this is what we're going to do. And I believe what we're going to see people step up. Because this is a church that's hungry for this, that's ready for this, that's ready to step up and say, God, use me. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. I want to go. And I promise you this. When you do that, when you say, yes, God, I'll go where you send me. I'll step out. I'll lead that small group even though I don't feel ready. I'll pray even though I don't know what to say. 
I'll lead even though I have no idea how. I'll do that. God, when you do that, what you're going to find is you're going to look back. And I, I'm telling you this because this is my life. That you're going to look back and you're going to go, wow. Wow. Look at where God has brought me. Look at how far I've come. Look at how he's led me. Look at how he's grown me. Look at how he's developed me. Why? Because you were walking with God by faith. Your grow, it's connected to your go. You want to grow over the next year? As we hit this new ministry season, it's going to require getting outside of your comfort zone. But I believe as we do it, we're going to see the kingdom of God expand, but you're also going to see growth, spiritual growth, like you never thought possible. God wants to grow you. It's going to happen when we fulfill the mission of God, when we live out the Great Commission. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing church. Lord, I have no doubt. In fact, Lord, I can feel the passion, the energy, the buy-in. This is just, this church is a sleeping giant that is ready to say, man, wherever you want me, whatever you want to do, I'm in. I thank you for their heart, Lord. You know yesterday how moved I was. And seeing our beautiful church family serve all over the city, loving our city, thank you for their heart. Thank you, Lord, because I did not build this congregation myself. This is a gift. Thank you for such beautiful, wonderful people. Lord, I pray that if there's anybody here today who maybe doesn't have a relationship with you, help me to find them. Help me to bring them home in Jesus' name. Hey, maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you stepped in here. Maybe this is your first time. Maybe it's first time in a while, or maybe you're just in a spot where you know you are not where you need to be with Christ. I'm not talking about believing in Jesus in the sense that you prayed a prayer years ago. I'm talking about putting Jesus at the very center of your life. You're ready to do real business with God. Our, our, our mission here at Church on the Move is to introduce people to the real Jesus. You want a real Jesus relationship today. Here's what I want you to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, you say, I want that. I'm ready to start that. Would you just lift up your hand? Would you say, yes, I want that. Yes, ma'am, I see you right down here. Anybody else? You say, I, I want a relationship, a real Jesus relationship. Yes, sir, I see you over here. Thank you. Thanks for being brave enough to do that. Anybody else? I want a real Jesus relationship, and I want to start that today. I'm going to wait for just one more second. Anybody else? Over here. Yes, sir, I see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Here's what we're going to do together, church family. Whether you lifted your hand or you didn't, we're going to pray all out loud together. Just a prayer of surrender. Would you just join me? Say, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus for me. I believe he died on a cross and he paid for my sin, my past, my failures, so that I could be made new. I believe he was raised from the dead and that he offers me new life. So today, I receive your new life. Thank you, Jesus, for your salvation, your restoration, your healing, your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Look up here. If that's you, you prayed that prayer. We got something for you. Even if you didn't raise your hand, you're welcome to stop by and grab this. Out in the lobbies, you're going to see tables that just say, I raised my hand. You stop by there. We've got a gift for you. This is the gospel according to John. It's a beautiful uh, rendition of the gospel according to John. It's got the, the gospel text over here. And then on each page is like a journal. You can journal in this. It's a great resource for you. This is out there. Stop by, free of charge, no strings attached. Grab one of these on your way out. And then also, for everybody else, uh, as you leave, I've got these Hope Rising invites. They're at the door. I would love for you to grab these and go with them this week. Think about who you could share these with. This is a series that I think has a lot of share potential because people are needing hope. People are always hungry for hope. And so I would hope you would grab one of these and take it out to your workplace, community, whatever. Share them with friends and family. Would you stand to your feet? I love you, Church on the Move. Thanks for being here this weekend. May the Lord bless 
and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. I love you. You're dismissed.